Genesis are a name well known in Europe. Hailing from Poland, they are now breaking through into the UK market with their line of peripherals. Keyboards, mice, headsets and the like. Now I've already taken a look at a couple of their offerings, a mouse and a headset. I'll link the videos to those in the description below. But spoiler alert, so far I've been very impressed. So when I found out that they also did a line of PC cases, I was intrigued to find out whether their cases are as good. So let's have a look at this one. This is the IRID 353 ARGB from Genesis. It's a micro ATX tower case with tempered glass front and side panels and three addressable RGB fans included. So let's have a closer look. Looking first at the front of it, it's got a plastic surround with a slab of tempered glass in the middle. Now that's got the Genesis logo printed in white at the top and around the glass panel is about a finger space gap for air to flow behind. I like the look of the front, it's quite well styled and with the addressable RGB fans on it, it looks really nice. And you can take this panel off by pulling it forward at the bottom and then you can see there's a magnetic dust filter in front of the fans. So let's have a look at those fans. There are two addressable RGB fans, 120mm ones, pre-mounted to the front behind the glass. Here you could swap the 120mm fans out for 140 if you wish. Alternatively, it will support either a 120, a 140 or a 240 radiator at the front. Moving up to the top of the case, we have the IOs and switches at the front. So let's have a look at those. First, we have the power switch, next to which is the hard drive and power LEDs. Then a reset switch. Next to that is an LED button. Then you've got USB 3, two USB 2s, and finally, the microphone and headphone jacks. Further back on the top, there's a magnetic dust filter. Uh, that covers the top fan and radiator mounts. And here again, as with the front, you can fit two 140mm or two 120mm fans or one 240mm radiator. Looking at the back of the case, moving up from the base, you have the PSU mounted at the bottom. Then there's four PCI brackets, which are the removable type, and they have a built-in clamping mechanism. Above those is the IO cutout. Next to here is a 120mm exhaust fan mount, complete with the included 120mm addressable RGB fan for exhaust. So let's go around to the rear side panel and have a look. As you can see, the panel is just plain black steel with no cutouts. It's held on by two thumb screws, very easy to remove. So now it's off, you can see there's a really good amount of space here for cable management. It's about 27 mil deep, has plenty of cable tie down points, and there's a nice big cutout for the CPU backplate to be accessible. Below there, you can see the back of the PSU shroud, which is split into two areas. On the right is where you'll be mounting your power supply, and on the left is a hard drive cage. Now that can take two three and a half inch drives, and it can be moved across to give more room for your cables. Now that's held in by some rubber mounts, which also help to reduce any vibration. And you can possibly remove that if you need to allow for even bigger PSUs. So that's really good to see if you're limited to a larger power supply. Now halfway up on the back is the RGB and fan controller. This has an addressable RGB pass-through, so you can control it by your motherboard. If you've got something like an Asus Aura Sync or MSI Mystic Lite on your board, then you can do that, but if not, you can control it with the switch on the top of the case, of course. The controller is powered by a single SATA connector, no Molex, thankfully, and it has a PWM connector for full control of the fan speeds from your motherboard. The hub can control five fans, and each fan has two cables, a standard three-pin fan connector and a three pin addressable RGB connector. 
Looking at the bottom of the case, it sits on four round chunky feet, which have these rubber pads to stop you scratching your desk. Under the power supply is a removable dust filter. Going around to the other side now, the tempered glass panel is four mil thick. It's held on with two thumb screws at the back and it's slightly tinted. It covers the whole of the side panel, although it has a black board around behind the glass. Now taking it off, we can see inside a bit better. So starting at the bottom, the P2 shroud has the Genesis logo and the name of the case printed onto it. Looking at the top of the shroud, there's a cutout for a radiator at the front and on top there are three cable management holes. Two at the back with rubber grommets and one here in the middle for the graphics card power cable to come through. Looking up from there on the right hand side there are two SSD mounts conveniently right next to these rubber grommeted cable management holes. There are two more cable management holes at the top which don't have rubber grommets. They're nicely rounded off and not at all sharp but it would be nice to see these with some kind of extra protection for your cabling. Now this is quite a compact case and will only take a micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard. What I found was that fitting a normal micro ATX motherboard in here was a little bit of a tight squeeze. There's pretty much no space between the bottom of the board and the PSU shroud. Now this can make it quite cramped to work in, especially when you're trying to put the front panel connectors in. You definitely can't put them in with the graphics card in place. Speaking of graphics cards, the maximum length graphics card you can fit in there is 375mm and the tallest CPU cooler can be up to 163mm. Now I would say that it was a relatively straightforward case to build in. I've transferred my son's old i7-6700K system into here and so let's see how that went. So there was the build, the case was actually really nice to build in. A little cramped in places like I say, but it does have some nice little features, like this little hook to route your fan cables through to keep them tidy at the back of the case. Now I did have some issues with the fan controller. Firstly, the motherboard does not have addressable RGB capabilities, 
so I had to stick to the built-in fan modes for colour. Not a problem though, my son loves the ones that are built in. Now the PWM control also didn't work. Now I've reported that back to the manufacturers and they've said that it won't work unless the addressable RGB cable is also connected, which is slightly annoying. Now there's no other way to control the fans and as I've got them now, they're stuck on 100%. But to be quite honest, they are really quiet. So that's gonna be something I can live with. I've got it on now and I can hardly hear it. Now the CPU cooler I used in here was the Arctic Freezer 34. Now that's 157 mil high, so it was just under the limit of 163. And it does fit nicely. Temperatures inside the case seem pretty reasonable too. The old 6700K in there ran under a Prime 95 stress torture test for over an hour and it didn't get above 67 degrees. Overall for about 60 pounds with the inclusion of the three fans, this is a brilliant micro ATX case. It looks great, it's nice to work in and despite the slight issues with the fan controller, I'd still have no problem recommending it. As long as you can find one. They are pretty few and far between in the UK at the moment. So I'll leave links to the Genesis Irid 353 ARGB in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. I want to say a huge thanks to my current Patreons and I will leave links to my Patreon account in the description too where you can donate and join these lovely people in supporting the channel. And speaking of supporting the channel, why not pop along to our Teespring store to check out our cool merch, like the t-shirt I'm wearing in this video. So don't forget to give this video a like if you liked it. Got loads more videos coming very soon. Best way not to miss any of those is to subscribe below. It doesn't cost a thing. And if you click the bell notification icon, you'll be told every time I upload a new video. Speaking of new videos, why not watch one of our other videos on the left hand side of the screen right now. So thanks for watching and I will see you later.